This is a normal NPC. It chases you, but it's not very smart. But with my NPC system, you can create enemies that are far more dynamic. Like one that attacks you from a distance and retreats when you get close, or one that only hunts you down if it actually sees you. In this tutorial, I'll first show you these features in action, and then break down exactly how they work. Let's get started. First off, these NPCs are easily customizable. You can change various stats, animations, and the model, all without touching the core system. Now watch how it behaves. The NPC can't see through walls. It actually needs a line of sight to chase or attack you. When losing sight of the player, it goes to the last place it saw them, which allows the NPC to navigate around corners. Additionally, the NPC keeps the best distance based on its attack range and will run away if you're too close. Lastly, it automatically faces a player, so attacks feel natural. I've also fixed some common issues you usually run into, like stopping the enemy from attacking after it's dead and added automatic cleanup so when an NPC is killed, all of its connections and resources are cleared up. The most important part about all of this is that is just the base behavior. It's all node based, meaning it's easy to adjust the sequence of actions for the NPCs to follow. For example, I can add a lunge action, so instead of simply chasing after, I can make the NPC dash if the player is too far away. Now before I explain how it all works, the model link is in the description. Just drag it into studio, ungroup everything, and move them into the correct locations. And clicking play, you should see an enemy NPC. If you find this tutorial helpful, make sure to subscribe. Now back to the video. The first step is to create a class. Now Roblox doesn't have real classes like other languages, but we can simulate one using a meta table. What this does is it allows us to create an enemy object with its own stats and behavior. This way, when we call the methods on the object, it can use its own data. This way, when we spawn it in, it can use its own stats to set up the humanoid. And in the run AI method, it can use the behavior we already defined. Now that we have the class, the next step is setting up the behavior system. At the top, we have the selector. Think of it like or logic. It picks the first item that works. So if the NPC doesn't see the player, it chooses the idol. But if the NPC sees the player, it chooses the attack sequence. Now the sequence runs its children in order and only moves on if each one succeeds. So it only moves if it can see the player and then it only faces and attacks the player if it gets to them. For example, since the NPC can't get to me, it will never attack until I move closer. Now this whole behavior tree actually runs because of the tick function. Every 0.2 seconds, it calls the root of the tree which is the selector in our case. However, the attack node has its own task thought weight. This briefly pauses the behavior tree. I did this because it creates a natural cooldown window, giving the player a chance to escape. If you set the cooldown to zero, you'll notice the NPC still pauses, and that's because the behavior tree only ticks once every 0.2 seconds. Lastly, we have the nodes. Each action or condition is its own node. Each node either returns a success or failure. If a node returns a success, the sequence continues to the next one. Otherwise, it starts from the beginning. Additionally, the sequence passes along context automatically, like how it passes the target found here. Now that you understand how it all works, we can start expanding on it. Right now, all enemies follow the same behavior tree. Let's change that by giving our templates a new field called behavior type. In the class constructor, we'll add this behavior type and pass it into the behavior tree function. Next, in the enemy AI script, we'll update the function to take behavior type as a new parameter and add an if statement to check the behavior type and return the correct behavior tree. Now, let's create a new node. The important part is having the dot new function so you can call it in the sequence. It doesn't have to have any parameters, but you can if you want your node to be customizable. Next, you also want the run method. This is what the behavior tree actually runs. You should pass an enemy and context into the parameters 
to pass in information about the enemy NPC and its target. The last step is just to add it to the sequence. And just like that, we've got a brand new behavior. If we spawn a range dummy instead, notice how it doesn't dash at all because it's using its own separate behavior tree. And that's all for this video. I hope you appreciate all the effort I put into this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.